Luis Federico Loire September 6, 1906 to December 2, 1987, was an Argentine physician and biochemist who received the 1970 Nobel Prize in Chemistry. Although born in France, Loire received the majority of his education at the University of Buenos Aires and was director of the private research group Fundación Instituto Campomar until his death in 1987. Although his laboratories were often plagued by lack of financial support and second-rate equipment, his research into sugar nucleotides, carbohydrate metabolism, and renal hypertension has garnered international attention and fame and has led to significant progress in understanding, diagnosing and treating the congenital disease galactosemia. Luis Loire is buried in La Recoleta Cemetery, Buenos Aires. Biography. <inaudible> <inaudible> Topic. Early years Loire's parents, Federico Loire and Hortensia Aguirre de Loire, traveled from Buenos Aires to Paris in the middle of 1906 with the intention of treating Federico's illness. However, Federico died in late August, and a week later Luis was born in an old house at 81 Victor Hugo Road in Paris, a few blocks away from the Arc de Triomphe. After returning to Argentina in 1908, Loire lived together with his eight siblings on their family's extensive property El Tuyu that his grandparents had purchased after their immigration from the Basque country of northern Spain. El Tuyu comprises 400 square kilometers of sandy land along the coastline from San Clemente del Tuyu to Mar de Ajo, which has since become a popular tourist attraction. During his childhood, the future Nobel Prize winner found himself observing natural phenomena with particular interest. His schoolwork and readings highlighted the connections between the natural sciences and biology. His education was divided between Escuela General San Martín primary school, Colegio La Cordere secondary school, and for a few months at Beaumont College in England. His grades were unspectacular, and his first stint in college ended quickly when he abandoned his architectural studies that he had begun in Paris's École Polytechnique. It was during the 1920s that Loire invented salsa golf, golf sauce. After being served prawns with the usual sauce during lunch with a group of friends at the Ocean Club in Mar del Plata, Loire came up with a peculiar combination of ketchup and mayonnaise to spice up his meal. With the financial difficulties that later plagued Loire's laboratories and research, he would joke, If I had patented that sauce, we'd have a lot more money for research right now. <laughs> Career Buenos Aires After returning again to Argentina, Loire obtained his Argentine citizenship and joined the Department of Medicine at the University of Buenos Aires in hopes of receiving his doctorate. However, he got off to a rocky start, requiring four attempts to pass his anatomy exam. He finally received his diploma in 1932 and began his residency in the Hospital de Clinicas and his medical internship in Ramos Mejia Hospital. After some initial conflicts with colleagues and complications in his method of treating patients, Loire decided to dedicate himself to research in the laboratory, claiming that, We could do little for our patients. Antibiotics, psychoactive D, and all the new therapeutic agents were unknown at the time. In 1933, he met Bernardo Hausse, who pointed Loire towards investigating in his doctoral thesis the suprarenal glands and carbohydrate metabolism. Hausse happened to be friends with Carlos Benorino Udondo, the brother-in-law of Victoria Ocampo, one of Loire's cousins. Following the recommendation of Udondo, Loire began working with Hausse, who in 1947 would later win the Nobel Prize for Physiology or Medicine. The two would develop a close relationship, collaborating on various projects until Hausse's death in 1971. In his lecture after winning the Nobel Prize, Loire claimed that his whole research career has been influenced by one person, Professor. Bernardo A. Hausse. <inaudible> Cambridge After only two years, Loire received recognition from the medical department at UBA for having produced the best doctoral thesis. Feeling that his knowledge in fields such as physics, mathematics, chemistry, and biology was lacking, he continued attending classes at the university as a part-time student. 
In 1936 he travelled to England to begin advanced studies at the University of Cambridge, under the supervision of another Nobel Prize winner, Sir Frederick Gowland Hopkins, who had obtained that distinction in 1929 for his work in physiology and in revealing the critical role of vitamins in maintaining good health. Lilloir's research in the Biochemical Laboratory of Cambridge centered around enzymes, more specifically the effects of cyanide and pyrophosphate on succinic dehydrogenase. From this moment, Lilloir began to specialize in researching carbohydrate metabolism. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> United States. Lilloir returned to Buenos Aires in 1937 after his brief stay at Cambridge. 1943 saw Loire marry, Luis Loire and Amelia Zuberbuehler would later have a daughter also named Amelia. However, his return to Argentina was amidst conflict and strife. Jose had been expelled from the University of Buenos Aires for signing a public petition opposing the Nazi regime in Germany and the military government led by Pedro Pablo Ramirez. Lilloir fled to the United States, where he assumed the position of associate professor in the Department of Pharmacology at Washington University in St. Louis, collaborating with Carl Corey and Jerdy Corey and thereafter worked with David E. Green at the College of Physicians and Surgeons, Columbia University as a research assistant. Lilloir would later credit Green with instilling within him the initiative to establish his own research group once back in Argentina. Fundación Instituto Campomar In 1945 Lilloir ended his exile and returned to Argentina to work under Jauce at the Instituto de Investigaciones Bioquímicas de la Fundación Campomar, which Lilloir would direct from its creation in 1947 by businessman and patron Jamie Campomar. Initially, the institute was composed of five rooms, a bathroom, central hall, patio, kitchen, and changing room. During the final years of the 1940s, although lacking financial resources and operating with very low-cost teams, Loire's successful experiments would reveal the chemical origins of sugar synthesis in yeast as well as the oxidation of fatty acids in the liver. Together with J. M. Munoz, he produced an active cell-free system, a first in scientific research. It had initially been assumed that in order to study a cell, scientists could not separate it from its host organism, as oxidation could only occur in intact cells. Along the way, Munoz and Loire, unable to procure the costly centrifuge needed to separate cell contents, improvised by spinning a tire stuffed with salt and ice. By 1947, he had formed a team that included Caputo, Enrico Khabib, Raul Truco, Alejandro Palladini, Carlos Cardini, and Jose Luis Reisig, with whom he investigated and discovered why a malfunctioning kidney and angiotensin helped cause hypertension. That same year, his colleague Raul Caputo, in his investigations of the mammary gland, made discoveries regarding carbohydrate storage and its subsequent transformation into a reserve energy form in organisms. <laughs> Sugar nucleotides At the beginning of 1948, Lilloir and his team identified the sugar nucleotides that were fundamental to the metabolism of carbohydrates, turning the Instituto Campomar into a biochemistry institution well known throughout the world. Immediately thereafter, Lilloir received the Argentine Scientific Society Prize, one of the many awards he would receive both in Argentina and internationally. During this time, his team dedicated itself to the study of glycoproteins. Loire and his colleagues elucidated the primary mechanisms of galactose metabolism, now coined the Loire pathway, and determined the cause of galactosemia, a serious genetic disorder that resulted in lactose intolerance. The following year, he reached an agreement with Roland Garcia, Dean of the Department of Natural Sciences at UBA, which named Loire, Carlos Eugenio Cardini and Enrico Khabib as titular professors in the university's newly founded Biochemical Institute. The institute would help develop scientific programs in budding Argentine universities as well as attract researchers and scholars from the United States, Japan, England, France, Spain, and other Latin American countries. Following Campomer's death in 1957, Loire and his team applied to the National Institutes of Health in the United States desperate for funding, and surprisingly was accepted. In 1958, the institute found a new home in a former all-girls school, a donation from the Argentine government. 
As Loire and his research gained greater prominence, further research came from the Argentine Research Council, and the institute would later become associated with the University of Buenos Aires. Topic. Later years As his work in the laboratory was coming to an end, Lilloir continued his teaching position in the Department of Natural Sciences at the University of Buenos Aires, taking a hiatus only to complete his studies at Cambridge and at the Enzyme Research Laboratory in the United States. In 1983, Lilloir became one of the founding members of the Third World Academy of Sciences, later renamed the TWAS. Topic. Nobel Prize On December 2, 1970, Loire received the Nobel Prize for Chemistry from the King of Sweden for his discovery of the metabolic pathways in lactose, becoming only the third Argentine to receive the prestigious honor in any field. In his acceptance speech at Stockholm, he borrowed from Winston Churchill's famous 1940 speech to the House of Commons and remarked, Never have I received so much for so little. Loire and his team reportedly celebrated by drinking champagne from test tubes, a rare departure from the humility and frugality that characterized the atmosphere of Fundación Instituto Campomar under Loire's direction. The $80,000 prize money was spent directly on research, and when asked about the significance of his achievement, Loire responded, This is only one step in a much larger project. I discovered no, not me, my team, the function of sugar nucleotides in cell metabolism. I want others to understand this, but it is not easy to explain, this is not a very noteworthy deed, and we hardly know even a little. <laughs> Legacy Lilwar published a short autobiography, entitled, Long Ago and Far Away in the 1983 Annual Review of Biochemistry. The title, Loire Claims, is derived from one of William Henry Hudson's novels that depicted the country wildlife and scenery of Loire's childhood. He died in Buenos Aires December 2, 1987, of a heart attack soon after returning to his home from the laboratory, and is buried in La Recoleta Cemetery. Mario Bunge, a friend and colleague of Loire, claims that his lasting legacy was proving that Scientific research on an international level, although precarious, was possible in an underdeveloped country in the middle of political strife, and credits Loire's vigilance and will for his ultimate success. With his research in dire financial straits, Loire often resorted to homemade gadgets and contraptions to continue his work in the laboratory. In one instance, Loire reportedly used waterproof cardboard to create makeshift gutters in order to protect his laboratory's library from the rain. Loire was known for his humility, focus, and consistency, described by many as a true monk in science. Every morning, his wife Amelia would drive him in their Fiat 600 and drop him off at 1719 Julian Alvarez Street, location of Fundacion Instituto Campomar, with Loire wearing the same worn out, gray overalls. He worked sitting on the same straw seat for decades and encouraged colleagues to eat lunch in the laboratory to save time, bringing enough meat stew to share with everyone. Indeed, despite Loire's frugality and extreme dedication to his research, he was a sociable man, claiming not to like working alone. The Fundacion Instituto Campomar has since been renamed Fundacion Instituto Loire, and has grown to become a 21,000 square feet 2,000 square meters building with 20 senior researchers, 42 technicians and administrative personnel, 8 post doctorate fellows, and 20 PhD candidates. The institute conducts research in a variety of fields, including Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and multiple sclerosis. Topic. Awards and distinctions Topic. Published works Suprarenales y metabolismo de los hidratos de carbono 1934. Pharmacologia de la Hypertensina, 1940. Hypertension arterial nephrogena, 1943. Perspectives in Biology, 1963. Renal hypertension. Mordo J. Lilwar L. F. Crisman C. R. January 1965. In vitro synthesis of particulate glycogen. Proc. Natal. A. C. A. D. Sci. USA 53 to 86 91
Bibcode 1965PNAS. 86M. DOI 10.1073/PNAS/53.1.86. PMC 219438. PMID 14283209. Parodi A. J., Crisman C. R., Lilwar L. F., Mordo J. September 1967. Properties of Synthetic and Native Liver Glycogen. Arch, Biochem. Biophys. 121 3, 769 78. doi 10 9861 PMID 6078102. 1983. Far away and long ago. Anu, Reverend Biochem, 52 to 1 15. doi 101146 PMID 6351722. Lipid bond saccharides containing glucose and galactose in Agrobacterium tumefaciens. 1984. Zoriguieta, A., Ugaldi, R. A., Loir, L. F. January 1985. An Intermediate in Cyclic Beta 1 2 Glucan Biosynthesis. Biochem. Biophys. Res. Commune. 126 1, 352 7. doi 10.1016 291 x 85 90613 8. PMID 3,970,697. Tolmaski, M. E., Staniloni, R. J., Lilwar, L. F. Structural correspondence between an oligosaccharide bound to a lipid with the repeating unit of the rhizobium melolati. Annales de la Asociación Quimica Argentina, 70-833-842. Tolmaski, M. E., Takahashi, H. K., Staniloni, R. J., Lilwar, L. F. N. Glycosylation of the Proteins. Annales de la Asociación Quimica Argentina, 70 405 411. Staniloni, R. J., Tolmaski, M. E., Petriella, C., Lilwar, L. F. November 1981. Transfer of oligosaccharide to protein from a lipid intermediate in plants. Plant Physiology. 68 5, 1175-9. doi, 10.1104, pp. 68.5.1175. PMC 426064. PMID 16662070. Staniloni, R. J., Tolmaski, M. E., Petriella, C., Ugaldi, R. A., Lilwar, L. F. The 10th of January 1980. Presence in a plant of a compound similar to the dolichyl diphosphate oligosaccharide of animal tissue. Biochemical Journal. 191 257-260. PMC 1162206. PMID 7470095. Tolmaski, M. E., Staniloni, R. J., Ugaldi, R. A., Lilwar, L. F. August 1980. Lipid bound sugars in rhizobium melilo T. Archives of Biochemistry and Biophysics. 203 1, 358-364. 10.1016-0003-9861-80-90187-3. PMID 6,447,479. Bibliography Lorenzano, Julio Cesar. Por los Caminos de Loire. Editorial Biblos, 1A edition, July 1994. ISBN 950-786-063-0. Zuberbuehler de Loire, Amelia. Retrato Personal de Loire. Volume 8, No. 25, pp. 45-46, 1983. Nachon, Carlos Alberto. Luis Federico Loire, Enseo de una Biografía. Bank Foundation of Boston, 
Topic References Topic External Links Fundacion Instituto Loire Luis Loire Biography from Nobel Prize Org The official site of Luisa Gross Horwitz Prize